Next, we're going to speak with Dr. Josh Mandel, who earned a BS in computer science at MIT and an MD degree at Tufts University School of Medicine. Currently, he's chief architect for the Smart Platform Project at the Boston Children's Hospital and Harvard Medical School. So Josh, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to be with uh, the students today. I sometimes think of you as a younger version of me, so uh, could you tell the students a little bit about your background? Sure. Uh, well, these days the main hat that I'm wearing is I'm the architect for a project called Smart Platforms at uh, Boston Children's Hospital, Harvard Medical School. But I have a background in computer science. I did undergrad in computer science at MIT. I spent a little bit of time working at a biotech startup in Cambridge, Mass, doing um, gene synthesis and laboratory automation. And I went to medical school at Tufts. I graduated in 2010 and realized I was having a lot of fun trying to fix the computer systems in hospitals and clinics. And I've been working hard since then uh, in the health informatics space. Oh, that's great. Uh, you've been involved, I guess, since the beginning with the SHARP project at Harvard Children's Hospital. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that's right, sure. So back in 2009, early 2010, uh, the Office of the National Coordinator for Health IT sponsored four research projects or put out proposals for four research projects, um, one in the area of security, one in the area of data normalization, one in the area of um, cognitive aspects of using EHRs, and one in the area of building app platforms on top of electronic health record systems. And that last one is a project called SMART that I've been working on at Harvard since 2010. Uh, and it's all about trying to build app platforms so that doctors and patients uh, and healthcare practitioners can use the applications that they want to to inter interact with health data. The idea was we've got iPhones in our civilian lives and Android phones that let us use whatever apps that we want. Uh, and wouldn't it be nice if in healthcare we could bring the apps that we wanted to the table to work with patient record data? This idea of app platforms is, is, is something that a number of people uh, are interested in. Uh, t t tell, uh, tell us why you feel it's important and, and what approach did uh, Harvard take to developing one? Yeah, so we have a lot of healthcare data, uh, some of which patients bring to the table, some of which are measured in a traditional clinical setting. Um, and those data live inside of a variety of different databases inside of hospitals and clinics. And when it comes to making sense of an entire patient to make a decision, to figure out a diagnosis, to decide on a kind of treatment, it's extremely helpful to be able to bring those data together in one place and to use specific tools that help to do a specific job. So this is something that we're pretty used to in terms of an app platform on the phone, where you might use a specific tool just to manage your calendar and a different tool to manage your to-do list. And if there's a better calendar application that comes along or a better to-do list that comes along, uh, you can trade information with your friends and find the best one that works for you. And we'd like to be able to do the same thing with the way that we make a diagnosis or make a treatment um, for a diabetic patient or engage in communicating with patients in a clinical setting. We'd like to be able to encourage app developers to build the best tools to do these small kinds of jobs uh, and give end users the freedom to pick the tools that really work for them. So there have been a number of approaches to these kinds of app platform development. And what we're doing at Harvard and with smart platforms is to build an open set of specifications built on open standards that anyone can implement um, without any proprietary technology in a stack. So we want to make sure that um, all the specifications we build are out there on the web for people to build on top of. Well, uh, along came HIMSS 2014, and I ran into you uh, there. And uh, to my surprise and delight, you were showing a new version of SMART. Can you uh, tell us about that? Sure. So we were very excited coming into the HIMSS conference, which is the Health Information Management System Society conference in Orlando this past February, where we were able to get three or four different EHR vendors to come together and implement support for the same set of apps. So we had some apps that we had built ourselves on the Smart Platforms team and other apps that had been built by independent application developers. And we were able to get the same package of apps running on top of a commercial EHR system from a company called Cerner, uh, on top of an open source electronic health record called Vista, which was maintained, uh, this instance of Vista was maintained by Hewlett Packard in their government innovation lab. And we were also able to show these same apps running on top of a system called HELP2 that runs at Intermountain Healthcare in Salt Lake City. So it was a really exciting time because we were able to take some new emerging standards from um, HL7, which is the Healthcare Standards Development Organization, 
um, and build this app platform on top of an open set of standards that EHR vendors and large healthcare provider organizations uh, and Hewlett Packard and their government innovation lab were all able to implement consistently. Now, more specifically, that new standard was FIRE. So yes, we've been doing a lot of work recently with FIRE, or Fast Healthcare Interoperability Resources, which provide a couple of key building blocks when you're thinking about building a help app platform. And so the first important building block that FIRE provides is a set of clinical data models. So how do you write down a medication or an allergy or a problem or a lab result or a set of patient demographics? And FIRE provides detailed data models, which are called resources, for each of those things. And the second building block that FIRE provides is an API, an application programming interface. And this is one that's built on HTTP and REST that lets you query for uh, these, the specific kinds of discrete data elements that you're interested in. So if you're trying to build a, a lab data viewing app, you can write a RESTful query to pull back just the lab results that you're interested in from a system that implements this FIRE API. So FIRE has been a really important building block for the current version of SMART, which is entirely based on open standards. Well, can you show us a little bit? Yeah, I'd be delighted to show you uh, what the SMART on FIRE platform looks like. So I mentioned that SMART is a platform where third-party app developers can build apps that hook into EHRs. And I'm going to start off by showing you not a real EHR, but kind of a demo sandbox system that we host at Harvard. So we won't be looking at any real patient data, but you'll see a, a set of uh, synthetic and anonymized patient data. And anybody who wants to try this at home can go to fire.smartplatforms.org uh, and create an account and go through the same uh, apps and the same demo that I'll be showing you here. But this fake EHR that I'll start out with just does two very simple jobs. It lets you find a patient, and then it lets you run another app. So I'll show you an example of a growth charts app that we built at Boston Children's Hospital. Uh, and I'm going to pick a pediatric record here. I'm going to search for a patient called Amy Lee. And I'm going to open this record in the Growth Charts app. And what we'll see when this launches is two different views of a patient's growth history. We decided it was really important to build apps that made sense not just for clinicians, but for patients as well. So we won't get deep into the features of this app, but I'll point out at a really high level, this app is able to fetch the data that it needs from the smart EHR that's running on the other end. And when it gets those data, it's able to plot the traditional kinds of growth curves that you see uh, on a paper growth chart. So the initial view that we'll see here uh, will show me the, a child's length or height, uh, as well as their weight, and we can see how it's been tracking over time. Uh, and this is an app that's built entirely using HTML and JavaScript. It runs entirely client-side in the web browser. So the only server-side component of this app is just a static web server that hosts this HTML and JavaScript. Uh, and the app itself is all just running in the browser. So this is a traditional kind of clinician-facing view that lets me see how growth has been tracking in terms of percentiles over time. But also built into this app is a communication tool so we can have a conversation with parents as well uh, that highlights a few of the key aspects of a child's growth. So in this example here, we see this is a patient with a healthy weight. Uh, and so rather than getting bogged down in a lot of curves and numbers that are changing over time, uh, the real essential message for a conversation with, uh, with Amy's parents here might be that Amy has a healthy weight uh, for her height and for her age. And we can see that her weight has been trending in a healthy fashion uh, since her last visit. So this is a, an app that we built. It's available open source, so anybody can take the, the code for this application and run it uh, or extend it to, to fit their needs. And it's an application that you're seeing here running against our, what we call uh, our sandbox server with 50 or 60 sample patients of data. And I believe the app is called Growthtastic, just so the, the students have the name. Yeah, well, the official name is it's the Smart Pediatric Growth Chart app. But when we want to sound jazzy about it, we'll call it Growthtastic. Um, and if it's interesting, Mark, I could show you a little bit about what the data look like under the hood when this app runs. I think it'd be great. OK. So let me actually open up the Chrome developer tools here and show you what happens when we load this app again. So what I want to show you is, as this app loads, the set of API calls that it makes in order to get data from the smart EHR. We won't talk about the details of authorization on authentication right now, uh, but I'll just say that under the hood, the app is getting the access tokens that it needs to, to fetch clinical data um, using OAuth 2. But once it's got those access tokens, it's able to make a couple of very simple API calls in order to fetch clinical data. Uh, the first one here is a call to get patient demographics. And so the call itself is just slash patient slash 880378, which is the patient ID in this case. And what we get back is a fire response, which is a JSON representation of patient demographics. 
which has the patient's name, the patient's birth date, uh, medical record numbers, other identifiers. And we can see just at a glance, this is the kind of payload that a developer could look at, inspect, and make sense of pretty quickly. And if there are any fields that you didn't understand, uh, the fire specification, which is hosted on the web, defines each one of these fields in great detail. So that's what the patient demographics look like. And I'll show you just one more example. Uh, this app only needs to make one other API call, which is to fetch vital signs. So heights and weights and body mass indexes. And in Fire, all of those things are called observations. So the app is able to fetch just the observations that it needs about a patient's growth over time. And I'll give you just a really quick look at what those observations look like when they come over the wire. So we're looking right now at the Fire JSON representation of an observation. Uh, and in this case, it's a body mass index observation. And we can see that this is a quantity of 16.9 kilograms per meter squared. And it was taken in 2008. So again, this is the JSON representation of a set of fire data. And this is over the wire, the kind of raw information that's fueling this app. Once the app fetches patient demographics and a set of these observations from the EHR, it's able to draw the visualization that you see here on the screen based just on those data. Josh, I, I know in addition to what you've shown us, you're interested in, in the idea that I, I, many people refer to as pull. Can you talk a bit about how you're using other technologies to enable patients to effectively subscribe to receive their own data? Sure. Well, so the work that I've been doing with my smart platforms architect hat on has been really focused on building tools that let uh, clinicians launch an app from an electronic health record system or that let patients launch an app from inside of a patient portal online. Uh, but I've also been very involved with some efforts at the, at the level of federal work groups to define standards and specifications that let patients access their own data online. So right now, in 2014, as part of Meaningful Use Stage 2, patients have the ability to view their data online through a patient portal and to download it and to transmit it to a third-party app that they choose. Um, and typically, the way that transmission happens is through something called uh, push messaging or the direct project, which works like secure email. I've been very interested in trying to define standards for a, a different kind of mechanism for apps to access data. So instead of basically emailing your data to the app, we can have a web API where apps ask for data and patients can authorize access to those data or not. And so we've defined a, a set of specifications called the Blue Button REST API uh, that have enabled anyone with health data, so an EHR vendor or a healthcare provider organization, um, to expose patient data for patients who want to authorize access to third-party applications. It's a very similar set of technology to what we've been doing with SMART, but a different set of use cases and a different set of end users. This is great. I, I want the students to reflect back on the interview with Doug Frisma much earlier in the course when he talked about the idea of using internet to move health IT into a new era of interoperability. And I think that, uh, Josh, you've just shown us a real live example of doing just that. And uh, I really appreciate your taking the time to do it. I, I hope this is something the students find exciting and, and maybe some of them will decide to do, do what you and I did and, and actually go into this field. Thank you again. Well, thanks very much, Mark. It's been my pleasure.